Now, in the last lesson, we looked at how we can give our elements a relative position. So that's a position that's relative to where the element would have been had we followed the natural HTML flow. So, for example, in this case, by making the image 30 pixels from the right relative to its previous position, then we're basically saying that there should be a right margin between the image and where it used to be in the value of 30 pixels. Now, I want to talk about a different way of positioning, which is using the absolute position. So in this case, I've got an image that's inside a div. So the div is colored red and it has a relative position. Now, our image is nested inside that div and I've given it an absolute position. Now, if I change the right coordinate property to 30 pixels, it's not going to shift left by 30 pixels. No, in fact, it's going to shift to the right of the screen. And this is because with absolute positioning, we are positioning the element, so in this case, the image element, relative to its parent. And in this case, its parent is that red div. So we now have added a right margin of 30 pixels between the image element and the parent div. Now, admittedly, the naming is a little bit confusing as I would have probably called absolute positioning relative positioning because we're always specifying a margin that's relative to its parent. But I think the reason why they called it absolute position is because in most cases, the parent is simply the entire body of the web page. So the position when you're using absolute positioning looks like you're giving it a margin relative to the entire page, which looks like it, you're changing the absolute position of it. But don't get confused about the naming. Just remember that relative positioning means that you're adding a margin relative to where the element should have been. But absolute position means that you're adding a margin to its parent element. So in this case, we've still got our three divs inside a parent element, that's the body element. Now let's get rid of our display and our position for all of our divs so that we now have three squares that are stacked vertically on top of each other, which are all block elements. So they are resting on different lines. Now, if I set the position of my first red square to absolute, and I give it a left margin of say 200 pixels. The first thing that you notice is that by using absolute positioning, it does affect the flow of your HTML. So unlike when we used relative positioning where we left behind some sort of ghost element where it still kept the positions of everything else the same, but when you're using absolute positioning, you're actually taking the element out of the flow of the document and it's no longer considered a part of the natural flow of the document. So that's why the blue square and the yellow square have shifted up because it's as if I've just gone and deleted that div. Basically, red is now dead to blue and yellow. It's like as if they never had a friendship before. But the cool thing is that I can now move this red square anywhere on screen relative to its parent, which is the entire body. So for example, I could say right 20 pixels and that will just give it a right margin of 20 pixels from the right of its parent, which is the body. And so as a challenge, I want you to complete exactly the same task, but it's going to be a little bit different this time. Now, this is what you're aiming for. You're aiming for three squares, still 100 pixel by 100 pixel, that are touching each other corner to corner. And this time, I want you to make it pixel perfect. So they are right up next to each other, touching each other exactly on their corners. And it should be yellow, then blue, then red. And you're going to use the absolute position system in order to do this. So pause the video and give it a go now. 
So in order to achieve the design that we want, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add position absolute to all of our divs. Now the yellow is almost exactly where it's meant to be, apart from one slight problem. And this was a bit of a trick question in there to see if you remembered what we did before. You can see that we're trying to get the yellow to touch with the left and the top edge. Now, I appreciate it's a little bit difficult to see because of how bright that yellow is. But if you look carefully, you can see that there's definitely a margin there between the yellow and the edge of the screen. And the reason for that is because remember, everything is nested inside our HTML body and our browser has default CSS rules for the body. And we have to get rid of those if we want to have no margin. So let's first target the body and set the margin to be zero around all four sides so that our yellow square can touch the edge. And that makes our maths a little bit easier when we're trying to figure out how to get the squares touching corner to corner. So we've got a yellow in the right position. The next thing is the blue. So if we're positioning the blue square relative to the parent, which is the body, then all we need to do is give it a left margin of 100 pixels and a top margin of 100 pixels. And now blue is touching yellow corner to corner. And finally, we can go to our red and we can change its top margin to 200 pixels and its left margin to 200 pixels. And we are now pixel perfect with our solution. And we've created the design that we wanted. So how did that go? You would have noticed that it's a lot easier moving things around using absolute positioning when you're just thinking about it being relative to the body. And in this case, if you wanted your squares to be touching each other, pixel perfect, with no space between them, then it's very, very easy to do. Because in this case, all three elements are positioning themselves relative to the same thing which is the body of the web page and not to different things like where they used to be. And this is usually a much easier way for people to think about layout. Although in most cases, you will find yourself using maybe a combination of both, especially when you want to keep the other elements on screen still in the same flow as what it used to be before you started positioning one element. So they're both really, really useful. And you'll see both of them really commonly across website CSS. Now, one thing to remember is that the parent doesn't always have to be the body. It can also be the closest parent that has a relative layout. So for example, if we put another div around our red square and we set its position, so this is called container, we set its position to be relative and we don't change it, we're not going to touch it. But this sets up this container to be a perfect parent for our absolute positioning. So let's give it a width of say 300 pixels, height of 300 pixels, and let's give it a background color of gray. Now you can see this container. Now you'll notice that the design for our web page has now changed and quite dramatically so because now our red square is a child of that parent container and now it's defining its position relative to that gray container square. So if I delete that left 200 and instead I say right 20 pixels, it's no longer having a right margin of 20 pixels from the edge of the body, but it's now relative to its parent container. And even though our other squares are blue and yellow are still relative to the body, because we haven't defined a vertical position for it, it's being pushed down by this element with a relative layout. So we can change this by giving it a top property of zero. 
And whenever you're using zero, you don't actually have to specify a unit like pixels or percent. And let's do the same for our yellow square as well. And let's push our red square over and let's push our red square over so that it is right zero. And you can see that we've got exactly the same layout, but this time because red is nested in a container, we're using completely different code. And the beauty of this is that you can use containers to fine tune the position of your elements on screen by using a combination of absolute and relative positioning. Now, the last thing I want to show you before we finish our section on positioning is I want to show you that last value, which is the fixed position. So for example, if I change the yellow's position from absolute to fixed, and I say that it is fixed to the top, then if I scroll through the web page, it will stay in its current position. Now I can show you this. If I create some H1s in here, just to give ourselves a bit more space so that we can actually scroll through our website. So I'm just gonna copy and paste a whole bunch of these. So we've now got a whole bunch of H1s and we can scroll through our web page. And you'll notice that the yellow div stays exactly where it is fixed in its position relative to the body of the website. And it doesn't move despite all my scrolling. So this is really useful if you have a nav bar that you, that you want to be fixed so that it follows the user as they scroll through your website. Or sometimes you might have a sidebar that will stay fixed. And this is how you would do it. So that's all I wanted to cover for the CSS position property. In the next lesson, we're going to look at how we can further improve our website by using what we've just learned.